not that anyone wants to hear me talk, but I should start a vlog. What's up, YouTube? What's up? guys i have no idea what i'm about to do right now well i have a rough idea i've been doing a little bit of research uh, so today i'm going to start the z of my 29 model a frame i like guys talk about putting like welding a nut or something for the for the body mounts i don't want to do that because dealing with strip nuts the nut were to break loose i know there's a bunch of different options i just don't want to do that so i figured this was probably my cleanest option a little pocket that i get big enough to put an end wrench in so as of right now, I don't have a frame table, so I've kind of mocked it up on these saw horses and this uh, square tubing. We use as fork extensions here. I've filmed a lot of other people's stuff in the past, but it was really awkward uh, for me to film myself because I just get in work mode and it's hard to remember to pull out the camera. I don't have a tripod here, so bear with me. All right, so I cut the back cross member off, kind of prepped the frame a little bit. All right, scrap this idea. Duh. Clamping this flat to the top surface, which I bottom, flat, kicks up. Tacked to the angle. This is still tapered. This is flat. So kicks it back. I don't even have to put a level angle finder on it or whatever. It is clearly sloped back. So still might use this idea just because it helps helps keep it clamped. But I'm going to have to bend this thing up. Oh, well. Got to try somehow. Some way, I should say. See, I'm really bad at remembering to record. I cut out some little pieces of two by three, three sixteenths wall, uh, square tubing. Uh, I made four pieces uh, for the Z for the kick up. Probably not gonna even bother grinding out welds. Um, I don't think, cause I'm just gonna try to make them pretty. Got it braced there and there after getting it level, making sure the back matches the top. And I did that just off of digital angle finder. Uh, right around here and then up here in this flat spot on both sides make sure they're both point of a degree or, or two at the most but anyways this frame isn't quite uh, two inches wide it's okay because i'm gonna end up boxing the frame i have started to up there uh, hopefully it transitions real clean there's a little frame rivet right there i had to notch out the tubing for on both sides just so i can get my pieces to sit flat a little gap there to weld a little gap there to weld so, and he's gonna go ahead and weld her out. And she's welding. Purposely leaving that spot open because the box piece will fit in there just nice. And this side, like I said, didn't turn out as pretty as I'd hoped, but uh, it'll work, you know? Cool beans, as Bella would say. Cling, cling, pinky ring, homie. All right, guys, this is the next day. I went ahead and welded out the frame plates for boxing top and bottom where this uh, two by four is i couldn't get there but did it all overhead and flat kind of bounced around split the heat wrench pockets uh, so this side because i'm doing the f1 box uh, just leaving that open because i might have to cut some more if not i'll try to fill it in kind of clean match profile i can come back and do that later because uh, i don't know what i'm doing 100% there yet um and then went ahead and just tacked these braces um to the fork extensions so I can kind of go ahead and do the same thing weld back and forth top and bottom kind of split it around maybe doing six inch stringers at a time or less pretty low heat but, but uh, there's a little bit of a heat affected zone nothing too too crazy because it's doing a nice little like uh edge weld kind of lower temp so I don't warp the frame but still plenty strong so anyway he's gonna go ahead and bounce back and forth welding this guy out now making some progress i'll be able to throw some primer on it here shortly but it's raining so not today i'll come back do that another time let's get it Not that anyone wants to hear me talk, but I should start a vlog. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Snapchat? Just getting, just getting litty over here. I'm just kidding. Anyways, for the most part, I think we're done. It's a lot of freaking grinding. My hands are still kind of vibrating. Z's done. There's definitely some janky sh** that's been done to this frame. I've already fixed a lot of it. Ugh, I don't know. 
probably gonna do something about that. Maybe, maybe not. There's some other janky I didn't do. I don't feel like fixing. Lots of holes fixed, lots of cracks. I don't know. Here's a picture of the high build primer I got from the local Ace Hardware and a few pictures of the frame in between coats, wet sanding down the high spots, filling in the low spots. Stuff actually worked pretty good. Here's a picture of the 750-16 tires and then the 550-16 tires for the front. I went for a big and little setup. Then I went ahead and took my 1944 wheels over to my good buddy Justin. He sandblasted and powder coated these things to absolute perfection. They turned out so good. Real good buddy Mondo, he's the one who mounted, balanced, and got my wheels and tires hooked up for me and whew, did such a good job. They turned out bitching. And then Kirk and Jake Ward hooked it up with what I believe is a 1948 rear banjo. This thing's super cool because it already has juice brakes and someone at one point had taken the time to chrome that center section. And I'm super pumped on that because nowadays that would cost a lot of money, take a lot of time, so I might polish it up a little bit. But anyways, next clip. Uh, talking about my rear leaf setup. What's up guys? So today I'm getting back on to working on the rear leaf spring setup for my Model A. There's a handful of guys on there that have been watching some videos as reference. So I figured I'd kind of do my own version of it. So it's a Vern Tardell. Crazy, crazy, crazy Casey's Customs had a really good video on this. And then another dude by the name Lad. Sorry buddy, don't remember. Your YouTube handle, but uh, getting some ideas from them on how they go about doing this. Shout out to Millworks. I don't know those guys, never talked to them, but their customer service and shipping and stuff's been pretty rad, and I like their Instagram, so shout out to you guys. Anyways, here's the leaf spring that I got from Millworks that I already had painted, but it's gonna need some some love and still gotta lube it up. It was an eight eight leaf pack. So based on my very limited research and knowledge, I believe that'd be a roadster spring. Uh, uh, I don't know if this is gonna be low enough. I don't know if it's gonna be too soft. I'm not sure this is what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna know how it's gonna ride until later on, but I'm not too worried because I can always redo the spring. New Millworks, main. I'm keeping the three next in line after the original main. I'm going to trim this down and uh, chamfer it. And then I'm gonna do the same with these three also gonna Go ahead and cut these down and chamfer it the bottom, clean them up, radius the end. I need to be better about filming. <laughs> Snap two parts with work done to them. No? Really wish I had a tripod because then I can film myself working, but all that I'm doing is help this thing together. Get these things, you know, squared up to each other. Take my Yahtzee. Take my welder's pencil and just trace the profile on there. So equal off of the center. Then I'll go ahead and do the same thing with this guy as I did this guy. And I'll do it to this one and this one. And then I'll end up matching the same radius and light chamfer and little scotch bright job on there to those three. Nice. Spring spacer set that goes up on there to the bottom to compensate for the U-bolt and you know, clip height to hold it in the frame rail. Real nice and easy. Oopsie. There it is. Needs to be clamped down a little bit more. Suck it up with uh, the bolt. And then uh, the bolts will go through when it's in the frame. I'm going to count again for the 19th time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The height of eight springs. Four spacers, one main, reverse side. Three follow the main, and then that's it. Hopefully that's good for the sedan. Might have to play around with this some more. I want it to be low, but I want it to ride as okay as it can. Kind of see where the old spring had rubbed the next layer up. Kind of the same story for all of these, but you can kind of even see right there, that's about exactly the part that I removed, cleaned it up. Really excited to get it bolted in. I gotta get it painted and everything and get the, get the car mocked up here soon, I hope. Because I just absolutely sucked at pulling my phone out to take videos, I did take some pictures and that's why I'm doing this voiceover. 
Uh, after I got the spring kind of mocked up, I wanted to put it inside the frame just to see how it'd fit because I'd never done that before. And here's a picture of the um, this black gloss epoxy paint that I got from Ace Hardware. I've used it before to paint wheels and it sprays really nice, super thick, it's epoxy. So it's pretty cool to get that out of a spray can. And then because I could not find this stuff at Tractor Supply, I ended up ordering it off of Amazon. And man, I'll tell you what, pun intended, this stuff is slick. It sprays nice but it definitely makes metal to metal contact surfaces very slick and I was pretty impressed with it. Can't really tell, but I sprayed all, the whole springs uh, with the black epoxy and then on the bottom side only of each of the springs, I sprayed that graphite spray. It did make for pretty tricky uh, for putting the springs together, but I'm really excited to see how it works instead of using the grease like they would have back in the day. I think it's gonna work pretty well. Turned out, turned out all right. Not perfect, but good enough. Which is nicer than I was originally planning on. So it was a little tricky to spread this spring and put it on my rear axle since it's a little bit wider, but I was able to accomplish that by once again using Millworks for their backing plate bolt-on over the axle leaf spring mounts. Their laser cut bent, pretty cool worked out really well and then I just took some pictures of mocking the frame up putting the axles underneath it and then because I've been doing all this stuff by myself using a cherry picker to put the body on and off it worked pretty well but this is when I got to finally see what the car looked like and man I'll tell you what I was pumped at this moment it wasn't quite as low as I thought it was going to be uh, I still got to do a reverse side main for the front and do a little bit of suspension tweaking but when I get my banger engine in there it's going to drop the front end down just a little bit um, this is pretty much going to wrap up the video for now. Uh, all of this was shot about six, seven months ago, and I've been sitting on it. Uh, coming up in the next video, I end up rechopping the roof. It already had, I believe, a four inch chop, but I wanted a little bit more of an aggressive look. So I end up cutting the whole roof off and taking another two inches out, lowering it back down. I really didn't film much, but I'm still in the process of doing that chop. I've taken a break for the last couple months just because the heat here in Arizona is ridiculous. And the older I get, the less I enjoy being out in it. So I've been wrapping up some other things, but I'm going to get back on to the metalwork on the roof. And uh, maybe in another six or seven months, I'll post an update video of the chop. But really hoping in this next year, bang out some work on the car. I'm really pumped. Thanks for... Uh, Wasting your time watching this video? Leave a like, thumbs up, comment, whatever. Never done this before. In front of the camera, super nerve wracking. I can't think straight when I'm talking to a microphone or to a camera. But uh, yeah, see you guys on, on the next one. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is...